By the think, way, I am yeah, quite drunk here. after drinking <laughs> this amount of, amount of alcohol. It's not good. <laughs> Hello band. everyone and welcome to an episode that's actually recording for once. And what? Like, yes, we had some not tech problems. Fucking crashing. <laughs> Yay! If anyone would like to open up the repository on GitHub for uh, handmade OBS or just simple screen recorder, I'll help. <laughs> yeah, same here. Well, I don't. I, I don't need. I don't need a, a a screen recorder. I need something that can record both inputs and outputs. And not well, just the answer is that is not Windows. It's not Windows. In the audience. Right. You know, it's funny. I think we went over that in the first episode. I think you mentioned. Yeah, it was either I'm still in pissed. the first episode, <laughs> and it's an ongoing problem. And yeah, I've been thinking back over the two and a half episodes we've recorded so far, and realized, <laughs> first of all, uh, well, the two and a, the two that we recorded, and the two and a half that we tried to record, I should say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I realized that in both of the first two episodes that we succeeded in recording, we failed. To mention very obvious things about our original topics. For instance, we were talking about <laughs> phones throughout a lot of the second episode <laughs> at the beginning, and we didn't mention the whole like I don't know if you've seen this, but on Handmade Network, there's a whole discussion about what would your handmade phone look like. So I actually right? yeah, 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 yeah. And we didn't even mention that. Okay, we're so really terrible at this. I have something to say about this. I told this to Miko before I got. I thought that was just not very. You you can't write a handmade phone. We do not have. No. Nobody, none of us have like the funds to do that. No, I certainly like you it was to a it, weird but... topic to open up in the first place. Like the problem is hardware, I, not I, software. I, 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 no, I, certainly. Hardware. Uh, what, what, I I said, what I said to Zach was, "It's a fun thing to talk about, but pointless to talk about." No, yeah, there's yeah. it's not going to lead anywhere, but it's an interesting <laughs> topic, and we didn't even yeah. mention. We were sitting there complaining about all these iPhone things, <laughs> and it didn't come up that like, oh. We can't do anything about this, but here are some random good ideas you See, might put in a phone. The sad part is, I don't even know if I could write a better phone. I really don't. Like, like Apple. The only thing I can say about the iPhone is, Ginger Bill, you have one too, right? I have an I have an Android now. I used okay. to have iPhones a lot, but, but I've gone to Android. But the only thing I can really say, say really nice about them is they're extremely stable. Oh God, yes. Yeah, they're, the most, they're the most stable operating system out of everything out right now. I've I've gone to Android, but I've gone to Nexus 5X because I wanted something that actually worked. If that makes any sense, like this is yeah. what Google wants, and this is how it works, and it's yeah. stable. Is it yeah. stable? That's surprising. I had I had a, I had a Nexus 5, uh, and I was never <clears throat> crashed on me. Every Android experience I've ever had has been garbage, so it's like yeah, no, it's granted. This uh, has crashed a couple of times. This one is, is running Scientian mod. It's mm. crashed a couple of times. Because I was an idiot. I don't know. I think <laughs> I never had a crash. I, crashed I don't think my hand. If I were to characterize my handmade <laughs> phone, I don't think it would crash less than an Apple phone. But I wouldn't really worry about that. The thing my handmade phone would do, and I said this on the forum, is my handmade phone would be a drive that you could copy files into and out of with a USB device, right? Like, yes, that's that's the number one thing. My my phone well, would, would be a computer. Okay, so but you can do that with most Android phones as well, though. I don't know why you'd want that in the first place. Like, you because... could probably just use this phone as a, um, like, hey, this is my USB drive that I just plug in. Yeah. And then like, I put all my data on it. What you your phone that you need to copy to You're not doing computer. work on your phone, but what you are doing is potentially, like, reading, I don't know, things you've downloaded on your PC, listening to MP3s and things like this. I just want... The, an open data model. That's what I want on my phone. You want in something fact, that kind of like schedules the stuff that you've done in a way. Here, that let me put it this way: I don't want it. I don't want a third party app. An operating okay. system should be able to communicate to another operating mm -hmm. system and transfer files. Mm -hmm. I don't want a third party mm -hmm. app to put anything on my or a third party application to put things on my MP3 player if that's well, what my phone is going to well, double you, as. You, you, that and all the Android, other things I might do with it. That, that you can do on Android fine if you install the driver. Which you, you can do to. it on um, iOS as well. It's just you have to do a little extra work. You don't need to click that big sync button. <laughs> Apple's sync method is awful. I don't know what they do wrong, but it's so bad. Yeah, it it's works, so but it doesn't bad. work. I know what you mean. It's, it's just too slow. It's okay. so, slow. so it's like on a handmade network. Like, okay, we need a handmade OBS. We need a handmade multi. Handmade OBS. We don't need handmade OBS. We can actually contribute to OBS itself. I think that is open source, right? I know. No, no, it is. Ninja Bell came through it, and it's a mess. Well, the I, thing I, is, I, you I could. 
I think there's a few ways you could approach the problem. You could say let's start from scratch, which would be the most handmade way to do it in a certain sense. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I think the the more most realistic thing is more like not fixing OBS either, because usually once the thing gets to a certain point that it's like you're doing a rewrite anyway, I question whether or not you're saving yourself any time by yeah. working within the framework. I would mm -hmm. say more like gut all of these sort of primitive parts and then improve those primitive parts and then build on top of that. Like there's there's existing or things that I wouldn't want. There's existing things in there I wouldn't want to have to rewrite, like yeah. how you actually encode and decode video. Yeah, like if fork OBS. They don't do that. They have, they have a library for that. Uh, they, they, yeah, they uh, don't they, do that. They, well, they, that's fine, but just they, gut whatever parts out of OBS work. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course, you'd reference back to it, but I feel like it's... I, I don't feel like it's as big of a project as everybody is making it out to be, you know? I feel like I don't I feel don't like know. that big the, of a project. For one thing, the I, motion I, box proves that one person can write something that plays a video. So I'm not sure how far away from <laughs> streaming it. I don't know. I feel like yeah, motion box is amazing person. in the fact that the, be the thing I really love about it is that it starts off where I actually finished. Like I open up the application, I finished this video, but I didn't finish it. Like this is where I stopped, yeah. and it works. Like why can't YouTube do that? YouTube does like, it if it's like an hour long, or if it's like an hour long or yeah, longer, and you have it, and you haven't, and you viewed it within like the last forty-eight hours. It remembers yeah, exactly. when you replay then. But sometimes I'm watching a, like a playlist or something that I've made or someone else has made, and I'm like, each video is like an hour long, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to just rewatch mm -hmm. this entire video or figure out where yeah. I finished. But, uh -huh. And I'm like, that motion box just starts off literally where I finished. Well, this is why. It's right. kind of just proof that owning data on your computer beats cloud every time. That's what Motion Box oh, yes. is. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, like handmade OBS, yeah. Uh, like uh, handmade multi strike recorded thingy, and uh, AF Devlog would be nice. Abner. <laughs> 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 that AF, hey, we don't care. Oh, we know that's not yeah, coming. No, yeah. If, if, I, like, I, like, I really enjoy if AF came because came because all the mm. uh, email. Things Honestly, here's doing. what might actually happen, Michael. He yeah. might actually release the email client and still no devlog. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, there's but definitely I, a devlog come, coming. But, but like, come I promise, on. never comes out. Come on, devlog 001 coming soon. A posted April 26, 2016. What month is it again? Is it September? It's September. September. Yeah. Uh, oh. yeah. Abner, I know he's basically nice as a person now. He's at uh, school and stuff, but come on! If he isn't on, if he isn't doing school tomorrow, we need to drag him on him at After Dark and do it live and just torture him about him. Yeah, about completely him. torture him. Like, <laughs> you're, not, you're him. not allowed to leave, Abner, before you tell us what the fuck is going on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, a, 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 a handmade Skype-like thing? That's already been worked out. That seemed interesting. What was the chap that was actually doing that? Yeah, um... I saw that. However, what I would want is a uh, for something like this is I would want to it to of course connect to multiple clients, but I want to spit out each individual feed uh, mm. into a separate video file, maybe even separate audio files. No, I think that a if you take Skype and separate it, it's like more of a communication application. That's how people use it. It's got a chat. It's got like built-in phone stuff, even. Yeah. yeah. And then the 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 face like face not FaceTime, but you know what I mean. The yeah. the, the exactly the, yeah the, the video person calls. person video call. Sure. What I think you want is you want there's two different things I want to see right, and one of them is the communication thing, which is basically the feature set of Skype, um, without ads, and <laughs> then there's um, a different one I want, which is the OBS version of that, which is what you're talking about, right? So when I'm just communicating with people as a phone call, I don't really need to record that. But then I, on a separate thing, it's like, okay, what we have here is four people using one application to talk to each other and then OBS to record it. And that could potentially stream. But what would be nicer is if each of us had this application. One of us is hosting the stream, but we're all streaming, yeah, no, right? No. Um, and we're all separately recording what's going on on no, our by ourselves. Hard thing. Um, it really doesn't. Like it's like this sounds like I, I may be understanding. I mean, I what, what, but all I'm saying is like we have one application that does one thing, and another application does the other. There's no reason. It, it's just a problem of making one executable where both things are possible at the same time. Yeah.
Maybe I'm understanding it, but I, I don't know. I feel like the OBS thing is a problem that could easily be solved within, like, six to nine months. If you have, like, decent developers. Like, OB, the oh, OBS I is not But you big. need decent developers, and you need the money. You well, need the other, what, what, what the money? money is the problem, not the developers. We need the yeah. money. You need to well, pay them. Oh, well, yeah, but... We, you need a, a, a handmade fund, like the indie yeah, fund. Yeah, like a, a, a Ooh, Patreon a for that. No, 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 not Patreon. Yeah. Like, like, we need something like the indie fund. A one-off. For handmade. We need a one-off. If anyone in the handmade community had any money, an then we can make yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a handmade fund. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. It, I don't feel like it's as big of... I don't think it's... Would it, I don't think it'd be that hard to replace and make it a handmade OBS. I don't. I think it would be a. I think it would be a project, I, I, I and I think the thing, I think it's a. It's similar to. It's similar to like t trying to ship an OpenGL game where it's like, you know, it should not in theory that hard, but you're gonna have to. Oh, we need to be able to stream from the desktop and WDM on Windows and what's going on here, and then blah blah blah. There's just so much crap that other people are gonna throw at you that I feel like. Yeah, I'm talking about just the Windows version, not like Linux or Mac, because okay. But even if you just limit limit it to Windows, I'm not sure that the operating system is at all gonna cooperate with you. I think you're dealing with some nasty problems there that are kind of just really brute force it takes a lot of uh uh time and expertise i think in my in, yeah well, as, in my understanding but I, uh, I mean in theory it's just like let's let's collect 30 frames a second through uh direct 3d encode them however they want them and upload them like in theory that's what it is yeah i <clears> think <throat> the biggest pro biggest uh, problem of uh of something like oh, a handmade obs is the matter of compressing encoding the data and sending it out. So I don't even think anyone does that manually anymore. I think you have to. Yeah. I think it takes too long to do yourself. I think you have I think to. They have to usually, I think OBS allows you to offset that, well, overload that to the um, GPU itself. Because a lot of them graphics know, cards I'm nowadays not allow you in, in, to do a lot of that. I'm not talking about encoding and compressing the video. I'm talking about the data stream you then have to send. To yeah. Because... Even, That's the even, hardest part even, I'm worried about. Even, uh, even when using uh, the H.264 encoding, it's still too big to send. Yeah, and time. there's another thing is you're not just dealing with operating system crap, but each streaming service, you have to stream to them in the right, like, you got to figure out mm. how to communicate with their servers and do their handshake dance I and whatever like else. there has to be a, a, like a standard for at least streaming it up. I mean, not, yeah. not, like, the, not like the handshake and making sure and making sure the keys are the same, but just the... The actual data stream is actually the, the standardized. Actual data, I think so. I I, I, I don't know. Like you agree on the I'm format, pretty, I'm not the sure um, it's, uh, it's, I'm not, sure it's not the protocol. Yeah. I don't think it's standardized at all. I mean, like, it, YouTube has to be using this, the same thing Twitch is using because nobody wants to rewrite their stuff for YouTube. So, like, it, it, like it, that's the only reason why I'm thinking of it that way. Well, when you want to upload to YouTube, it actually automatically converts it for you, but you have to wait a while. It'll... I'm talking about no, I'm talking about the streaming service. But streaming you. version, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the streaming service probably have to agree on a like a protocol, like maybe H two six six H two H two eight. This is probably five, just five the five version, the one after the four. I, I this is probably the cool official way to figure out what protocol they use for Twitch. Like, I'm sure agree it's not on that it. Hard. But uh, do they not? So are we? Are Ginger Bill? Are you? And to use your full name to address you for some reason. Um, <laughs> your full screen name. Um, yes. Uh, do you? Are you saying that they do agree on something, or that they should? I wasn't sure. What I, I think they should agree on what the protocol is. Mm -hmm. I think Not they have, what, nobody wants to rewrite their stuff. That's the only reason. Yeah, they why. don't want to rewrite the stuff. It's and also they don't kind of agree on what they may be encoding it in. Mm -hmm. Like YouTube may be doing it in Flash and as well as H two six four, but Twitch I think is only to H two six four and like like why don't they all just agree and like hey can we just do this one like protocol like this is what the format should be. I mean, that would be nice, but my point is in. Unless we have a handmade, I don't know, revolution that gets all the companies in the world to be <laughs> nice with us, what we're actually talking about is how to make o a handmade OBS, and that's another one of the things where there's just yeah. other people throwing crap at you to make OBS. I don't, I, I don't mean, know. Like, I'm sure that the OBS you, code isn't in, in awesome, the grand, but yeah. I don't think the problems domain is actually 
going to lend itself to doing much better than OBS anyway, in my opinion. No, I think OBS is pretty fine, actually. I don't think it's there's... It's a little crash. That... Right. Yeah, but... it crashes, but I don't think it's the actual, like, the idea of the no. program that's the problem. Uh, no, I don't think... I also don't think... All people are keep bashing it for, for the CPU usage just, and such, but that's just I'm how really much it takes good to with do the this. CPU no, it's... It... OBS is extremely lightweight, like, compared to XSplit for capturing, oh yeah. my god. Yeah, oh, XSplit is garbage. Like, compared to my previous computer, I had a really crap AD AMD machine, and it was taken up, OBS was taken up 40% 40% of the entire CPU. Mm -hmm. This new one that I've got is taken up 3%. Yeah, the 6 three. Wow. What, what do you have, what do you have? Uh, I've got an Intel i5 hey, 6000 something AMD. series. I have the 6700K and it's just a yeah, 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 something like that. I can't remember exactly what I got. Because ah, I didn't need the hyper threading to be honest with you. So I thought I'd just get the i5 series. Oh, yeah, I know. I agree, before I had like an AMD Phenom, Phenom, whatever it's called. And it was oh, wow, literally that's awesome. 40% of the actual CPU. But as soon as I've gone to this, it's like, oh. It's not even bothering yeah, it. Yeah, I have an i7 So what's that game? about? How can it be? I mean, they're not the, the difference between AMD and Intel. They can't, can't be that big. So it's no, my no, CPU is about, about like ten years so old. Yeah, it's, <laughs> okay. it's the age. Like the architecture is ten years old, not the actual CPU. Okay. The CPU is in like six, but like yeah. this Five, generation six. of Intel CPUs is really good. Like they did a real good job on this generation. Yeah, I, I think their um, the actual Intel... like micro architecture is really good. It's it... like they've optimized on certain things very, very, very well. The they're a little hot though. Being a, being also a hardware, uh, like a hardware nerd here, Intel CPUs hasn't changed for six years. No, no nothing meaningful performance gain has been made since I'm running no. a, a seven year old, uh, architecture wise. I'm not planning, I can't see myself upgrading for another five. There's yeah, no I, minimal, I, meaningful, unless AMD actually makes them. I went to the 6700K and the 6700K I plan on keeping for a long time right like, now. That, that performance, performance gains in the CPUs hasn't been, it's, it's just, it's just not happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, no, I, I agree. I agree. But it, 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 there's definitely like, I don't know when I, I had an AMD too before uh, I upgraded a few months ago. And just the performance difference between the i the i seven six seven hundred K and that AMD chip is just like here and here. It's like it's crazy. Yeah, wow. like my compile times for literally like C programs have gone from like one point two seconds to point seven seconds. Wow. And I think that's great yeah, in my I, opinion. I, I, I'm I don't know allowed... what's different. I really don't. But it's just for me that was the biggest difference. Like I yeah. noticed that I was like great. I can actually compile things slightly like hot, twice as fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was the great benefit for me. But I don't think computers have got. I think computers have got. The hardware's got faster, but the software hasn't catched up to it, and or caught up. Whatever you want, to correct grammar if you want to put it, get it that way. Um, and I just think like the the hardware is getting great and accelerating really, really fast over these years. But none of the software's caught up, and it's it's kind of showing it. Mm. Like you can say your seven year old, ten year old hardware is still as fast as modern day hardware because the actual software hasn't changed to meet the requirements of the modern day hardware. And that's kind of sad. Yeah. You know, I agree. We have, we have like crazy power boxes and we're not like able to use all of our new, all no. of, uh, everything. I have like, like the 1080 is a crazy card and I don't think nobody's even. Getting... But I think half the problem as well is also like the libraries and also the actual languages that we actually give to these, the actual devices. Like, I don't think there's many languages out there that um, express the hardware that we actually have. Mm -hmm. Like C is designed for seven, like it's hardware in the seventies. It was meant to be deployed yeah. like the PDD. And no one else, is, no one's designing languages with the idea of let's design it on top of the hardware. They're de they're no. designing languages like oh let's make a higher level because we need to do a yeah. higher yeah. of C. Yeah. They're not and thinking. That's let's... my problem. Like no, you should to design for hardware. Them. Every, mm -hmm. Everyone like, is extracting a way the computer we are actually using. 
Like that's like, that's the, their yeah. language features. But it, interestingly, you might think that the high level languages would work if they were based on lower level languages that were exactly using the hardware. Yeah. They go down to our base, like, why not? Not? like Rust, Nim, Go, whatever you want to say what the new highlight of the week is, none of them actually like, hey, this is what our actual hardware is like nowadays. Mm -hmm. We optimize for that. But like we not can't I don't like think that. we can, can we? Like our kernels are still from the nineties. Like we can't do it. Yeah, I'm not talking about the software though. The, but like this hardware, like we have SIMD, we have multiple threads, mm -hmm. we have Atomics, we have oh, people who are doing so many things like that. But no languages kind of like design them around the actual hardware. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's half the problem. It's like most languages are trying to be improve upon the previous, well, but they're I not realizing of, why the previous was so good. Like it was great with the hardware. These are yeah. these are designed to be like first of all, none of them are like. There's nothing, no good, like, sources, but pretty much anywhere to mm. read about threading or SIMD. And they don't make them easy to learn. Like, I feel like that's no. part of it, is they make them, like, a real bitch. Like, threading is, like, a, still a big problem. I feel like, like Alan, you, I think you've done a lot of threading, right? And it's still yeah. probably a bitch for you, right? Oh, yeah. It's a problem all the time. Yeah. Mm. And SIMD, no one wants to write. Like, everyone banes writing SIMD. And it's just, I feel like... No, I think um, I mean I've I I think this was off stream when I gave these ideas to Bill last time that I gave them to him. But to repeat it again, I've been I don't know why, but I've been interested in language constructs for threading for a long time because it's just a thing that I recognize as like it's this huge hassle just to launch a thread. Like you have to it's not built into any language except like Go, I guess. And yeah, that's it's a very specific kind of threading. If you aren't doing exactly what the way they want you to thread, it's not as built in anymore. I'm, I, if I understand correctly. Um, but I mean, there's things like there's different kinds of threading operations all over the place. And in theory, you can look at things and be like, these 10 tasks are all completely unrelated. In theory, I could make a task clip for each one. And, uh, the problem is I don't want to go through like the the just the, the the dredge work of wrapping each one in a procedure and then launching a thread and waiting on all of them and writing my own thread pool that works exactly the way this ta set of tasklets need. So in your head, you're like, I could use 10 cores here if I had them, but I'm going to use one because it's impossible to do this without a bug. Right. Oh, good and man. all you would actually want to do is tell the system these things go in parallel, like wrap them in little markups that say these things all work in parallel. And then the language should solve the problem for you if it knew that your hardware had threads, right? Exactly. Um, and it's, I don't think any language nowadays kind of maps to what the hardware you actually have underlying. Mm -hmm. They're trying to exp like abstract it so much that you don't have to think mm -hmm. about what you're programming about. And it's like, but no, I actually know that my computer has like four cores and mm -hmm. four hyper threads or whatever, and eight, whatever. Like, I'm like, no, I want to actually optimize for that. And I know most people have them. Or I know, I know my hardware has like eight gigs of RAM. I like, don't care about the abstractions. What do I actually have? Mm -hmm. And Go is one of those weird things where they're using this communication sequencing processing model or the CSP model for concurrency and it seems okay in some circumstances but the way it does it is it kind of uses like a software version of fibers everywhere mm, okay. like in win32 you have fibers and they're yeah. like a lightweight thread or coroutines or coroutines they are literally go routines is what they call them are coroutine coroutines and they're very very useful in certain circumstances but in many circumstances you don't actually want them you don't because they are actually very very slow they have a lot of baggage they've got to call yeah. and they've got an environment they've got to bring with them mm -hmm. and yes they're easier because you don't have to think about the model but but it once you kind of abstract that away you kind of lose what the actual hardware is underneath mm -hmm. and i think well, that's just like what you kind of lose you lose the actual real worldness yeah yeah well i think it's interesting um this kind of gets into, like, uh, in my mind, it gets into, like, the question of, like, API design, except language design is, like, yes. language design is a superset of API design, I think. And, <laughs> kinda, um, kinda. Kinda, and, yes. And um, it's, it's, um, it, it reminds me, though, in API design that when, when you sit down to design an API, mm -hmm. um, 
like Casey's adv uh, advice is always write the usage code first. I think Mike Acton, the way he put it is the way I actually prefer to think about it, which is, and I can't remember where Mike said this, but he said something like a lot of people have make the mistake of representing the API in terms of their solution to the problem rather than in the terms of the problem. Right. I completely and, agree with that. And I, I think agree. the same thing applies to languages, which is that everyone's like, all right, when this whole thing is done, when I'm done, what I'm going to have with this language is we're going to be able to have different things that are going on and they mm -hmm. can send messages to one another to, to synchronize and they're separate. And like, this is the solution space. So we're going to describe the whole thing in that. And it's like, actually, no, the problem space is we've got eight cores and they can execute in parallel. And yes. then we want, we want them to be able to context switch on occasion. There's the problem space. You need your API or your language to describe the problem space because eventually the solution you came up with is not going to be the solution to the problem you're dealing with anymore. Mm -hmm. But the problem space will still be the same problem space, right? I mean, so you yeah. want your your APIs. Well, your like, you've got problem. a problem right. and you're yeah. trying to solve it with certain tools, but you haven't got the tools to mm -hmm. solve the problem solution you want. Right. Like the, and like that the... is kind of the in many domains, not just programming, like physics or chemistry or any sciences. You've got certain methods that you can solve a problem, but you know what the solution may be, but you can't solve it with the the, the methods you have. So you mm. have to find a different yeah. method, and that's again the same with programming in general. And it's it's annoying. <laughs> sure. well, I feel like like even our like. Like the, like the Windows threading API is bad. Like mm. I just I feel like the whole design around bad. threading, I just think like it's just by like clunky. Like I don't yeah. want to have to call create thread. I just want to like say, oh, this function is a thread and it does mm. this. Like I just like that, that, that's what I want to do. Well, I don't want to I call think... create thread, stop thread, resume thread, any of that bullshit. But I you need, need language thread. support for that kind of stuff. You yeah, exactly. I think you great. can't do that at OS level. You have to no. have language designed around that. Yeah, the fact that oh, it, the reason that it's clunky is because it's in C, not because of Windows, is my take on it. No. I don't, there's no good API yeah, in C no. for threads. Yeah, that, that, the language has to design around concurrency. Like, C was never designed around like that. Like, it was no, designed no. for the PDP 11 machine. Yeah, you didn't have any had any concurrency wasn't that machine. Like, yeah, you didn't have these threadings or parallelism no. bullshit or anything in C. They existed, yeah, but no. they were not common. They were right, not, for like, sure. Was. Now everyone has them. It's they, stuff we it, should be using. It's it, not easy for us to use. The use case for concurrency back then was the few supercomputers that were there were. Yeah. And they were all written. They were all written in Pascal, on Fortran. So. Or Fortran. I know those people are still programming yeah, yeah, like, Fortran for God's sake. That's Pascal and like, Fortran. Like what still programming on, Fortran? So C never really needed to solve the concurrency problem. No. Because it was a different problem domain. Yeah. Like the reason yeah. people use C was for different certain problems, and that's what most languages are still for. Like physics still uses Fortran because it solves a lot of the aliasing problems they have. But C still actually solves that problem nowadays, but they just haven't gone over it because it's not that big of a jump. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. It's no, just, I, I so agree. It's like we have to uh, just work with modern stuff thing, and our new tools. Here's the thing I'm not totally sure on. There is one difference between, say, abstracting um, SIMD versus abstracting a thread, which is that yes. no matter what you do when you abstract the thread, in your if it's in the language or at an API level, um, which hopefully, like we've discussed, hopefully we all think I think it's in the language. But if it's in the language, that raises the question that you have to call into the kernel to make threads. You can't do yes. it any yeah. other way. Oh, yeah. It's different sure. than SIMD, where you don't call to a kernel to do SIMD. You, that is just a, on the hardware thing, where yes. you just put the next instruction in line is the SIMD instruction. So how do you think as, you know, because you're making Odin, if you were yes. to build language support in for threads, does is that something you just say your language needs to be compiled for a certain operating system? Because if you use the threading stuff, it got to talk to the kernel or what? I think it's probably like a runtime layer. Like you okay. have like an interface that you say, hey, this is kind of how I want to work. But the runtime handles all the dirty work, like how it actually actually calls the threads and creation. Yeah, like, do you have threads in your language at Thunderbird? Not threads? yet, but you can use the C functions. Like I have oh, threads true. if you call C, like <laughs> I have the foreign function interface and stuff already uh, done. Like, yeah, if you want language. But it's not built into the language. Like the only thing I have got built into language is thread local storage <laughs> <laughs> because I needed that for the context stuff, like the, the implicit context, like for allocates and logging mm -hmm. and yeah. um, thread data. But I'm still really not sure how I should even do concurrency or threat parallelism in the language because 
what do I even do as the default? Do I actually enforce a model on someone or do I yeah. actually say, no, here's the hardware, but it's kind of mapped onto this like paradigm? Right. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, that's, that's even the, even if it's language support, uh, like direct language support for concurrency, it, yes. can, it can't really be anything but synthetic sugar. No, for, exactly. For, uh, for uh, compiled uh, for uh, uh, like API calls because that's how the OS does it. Exactly, so, like this actual like like this instruction actually like in my language actually maps to a procedure or two yeah, procedures. Can, it, can, it can only be expanded to. Yeah, I, well, I kind of want like that C analogy where this actually maps to the actual like what instructions I have, like an add literally acts to like the add instruction or a move is a move or whatever. And it's just this, and then most languages kind of miss that kind of idea, like, hey, this is actually what the hardware is doing. And concurrency is another thing, like, hey, I have atomics. Name a language that does atomics correctly. I can't correct name one. Well, and everybody, this concept of atomics is incorrect, so that doesn't help it. No, so because like, atomics are weird in their concept. Oh, I agree. Like, and once again, there's nothing good for learning them. Like, go Google really atomics, and you probably get in like, sequence. You've got in it's you've like, got to lock it, you've got to unlock it, you've got it. The concept itself is bizarre. Like, I, I bet if you Google C plus plus atomic, the first thing that pops up is STD atomic. So good exactly, luck, yeah, it's like. And then even like the C11 model is actually pretty decent in my opinion. Like the C11 for atomics is very well designed, but even then it's really clunky to use. Yeah. Like I don't have to, I shouldn't have to worry how the actual CPU works. At the, yeah. it, it, I should say, hey. We're in 2016, I, we shouldn't have to think about that. No. And it's like, wait, 2011, like that's five years ago. They only just kind of think, you know what? What's, oh, what? No. Mm -hmm. like, they only just figured it out like, hey, we want to map to the hardware. Like, so let me let me, let me me probe on this because I asked, I think, you, I think you answered my question, but I want to make sure I understand because I'm just curious. Mm. So for instance, in C, if I set like, I make a big struct and it's like a K, right? Like a kilobyte yes. in size. And I initialize it to all zeros by doing like bracket, zero bracket, right? Yes. It has to use memset to actually do that, right? You, ha you're, you, you can't yes. you can't have no standard library because then it goes, oh, I don't know how to memset to zero. Well, you don't actually have a standard call. library, but you, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, you have I'm to have an ending. implementation for it to link yes. to. Like, it actually does a procedure call there. It does not just know how to generate the code without mm. that, right? So if you take out your standard library, you have to replace it uh, for that kind of thing. Are you saying it's the same thing with threads? Like, if you don't build with a standard library, you need to do the calls, but there are language constructs that require certain standard library things to be present? Or Yes. I That's what kind of I'm saying. Like, a language does kind of require, like, rely on the runtime, mm -hmm. but it kind of, like, you could replace the runtime in a sense. Right. Like, it's not hard grain into language like some, like, higher okay. life languages do. Okay. Because a thread is kind of a low-level construct. An right. atomic uh, instruction is a low-level construct. A, mm -hmm. w you know, it, they are all like low-level constructs, like, but they aren't. They aren't just like it's kind of a sense like they should be able to be implemented by the user if they needed to, mm -hmm. but they shouldn't need to be. They shouldn't need to be if unless they're like doing fancy pants stuff on no, their yeah. own. Like right. you're not doing something like what everyone else in like ninety nine percent of people are doing. Like if right. you're doing something that's very specific. Mm -hmm. Like for a specific architecture or maybe even a specific CPU in sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotcha. So you would have you wouldn't because what I'm trying to get at is it wouldn't just be like a standard library like you would have to have a standard library create thread. Mm. Well, the default have, standard library. Yeah. Would you also have the equivalent to this bracket zero bracket where there's sim very simple language grammar that links into that, or would you say that that's going too far because that's where you start to introduce models that aren't necessarily correct? I don't know. I actually, I honestly don't know. Hmm. I think because I also think a lot it's, not, of... it's an open question. I really don't know like the answers to this question yeah. because I'm having to ask loads of people for like what their opinions are. And I'm not getting in like empirical answer to it. I'm just, well, it's literally just problem. like you say. I think Go is the only I don't think there is an answer. That's tried. the question. Yeah. The data doesn't exist yet. You got to generate the data on whether these things work. Yeah, if they yeah. ask me something like, how should I do concurrency? Maybe people will think, I don't know. I've never seen a good way. 
It, I haven't seen Cedar Good Way. I think so, the Go Way is pretty decent, but it kind of relies on garbage collection or it relies upon, um, like, like non-determinism. Like, I love determinism. Like, I love knowing when things happen or when they should happen. But it it's it's a weird kind of idea. Yeah. And I don't know the answer. I really don't know the answer. Hmm. And with that... <laughs> I think we will end it right here. Yes. We basically don't know anything, people. We oh, are man. very bad. We're just sitting here guessing because yes. nobody else is so. Your guess is good as ours. <laughs> yes. Your guess is as good as ours unless it's, unless it's, it, it is if Apple should release a devlog because then the answer is definitively yes. <laughs> yes. Apple, if you have the answer, please email me, please. It's, if you have yes. Apple's devlog and you're holding it ransom, screw you. Abner, email Abner. Write a message to me saying one, two, three, help, and we'll figure it out. Yes. <laughs> uh, so until cute. then, take care, people. Yes. See you next time. And goodbye. Bye. -bye.